Hello, Trailblazers. Welcome to the Trailblazers Palette Podcast. I'm your host, Sancha Marshall, and today we're on a vibrant journey into the world of art with Jess Swan, a self-taught abstract artist from Perth, Western Australia. Jess's work is all about intuitive, vibrant creations, and she weaves her magic in her studio home. In her blossoming artistic journey, Jess has gained international recognition for her uniquely playful style. Her paintings aren't planned, they're about embracing the moment, letting colours and shapes lead the way. With a background in interior design and a deep love for nature, Jess seamlessly blends painterly details and fluid expression, drawing inspiration from her happiest memories. Jess, a warm welcome to the Trailblazers Palette Podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm I'm excited that um, I'm doing. I'm finally taking the step into doing a podcast. Like this is the first one, so it's very exciting and nerve wracking. Yes, it's great yeah. to have you. I think this is only like my third podcast, so I'm still, you know, feeling oh, it out awesome. myself. Self We're in the and, same boat. Yeah, that's it. It's all, it's all still new, new and learning along the way. So, awesome. yes, if you could just share with us, I guess your your path that led to you becoming an artist. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a long story, but um, I'll try to keep it, um, you know, short and sweet. Um, But yeah, I basically have always been a very creative, artsy type of person in terms of expressing myself through drawing. When I was a kid, I was always painting and drawing and had little books of, you know, little drawings on my desk when I was quite little. So it's just something that I've always, you know, been drawn to and um from there I just I basically in high school years fell into doing um, art class and obviously got exposed to different methods and different media and I just knew it was something that gave me kind of like a a release a bit of a therapy a bit of joy you know I I was connected to art from always, from ever since I can remember. So, yeah, I've always been artsy and I, um, after basically high school days, I loved art class, got A's, you know, did really well. My um, my t- my teacher was, you know, saying I should do something with it and I was always, I had this mentality that was sort of, you know, taught to me through just uh, everyone around me really that, art wasn't really a career you know it wasn't going to get you to the goals that I had like I wanted to have a family I wanted to have a house I wanted to own my own house I wanted to do all those things they were things that I wanted to do and I just got fed that whole you know starving artist thing Um, and it scared me because I was like I really do want those other things and I want to be able to provide for a family and do those things so I didn't even ever entertain it as a a job or you know a way of life so I basically thought it was more like a thing that I could do on the side if I ever had the time and um I took what I my creative side and decided to channel that into interior design and I I do have a knack for that I do love interiors I like to do my own place and I do help my friends and other people with little bits of advice here and there and I did that for seven years so I was a color consultant slash interior designer I worked for a a number of companies paint companies as a color consultant and then um, interior design firms so doing that for a good amount of time until I was ready to have children And creatively, that gave me an outlet, Uh, but I never felt like I fully fulfilled or like it was a passion, you know, like I liked doing it, but it wasn't the same as when I picked up a paintbrush. And so um, my, I had kids and I just got, you know, swept into that world of uh, being a mom, stay at home mom. I wanted to be home with the kids. My parents weren't able to do that with us. They worked you know a lot and um so for me I was like if we can do it let's try and do it my husband had that same mentality his mum was a stay-at-home mum for many years and she worked from home so she was always there and I thought that would be a lovely thing to give to the kids so that was something that I always dreamed of giving and doing with my family so we did that 
and I immersed myself in that. And then when I, um, my little boy was one, so I had three kids at that stage. I have four now, but yeah, I had three kids then and he was one and I was redoing the house. I decided, you know, I felt like I'd been so involved in everything to do with family and kids for so long that I'd lost a little bit of that creativity. I hadn't spent any time doing anything artsy or even interiors wise, anything like that. So for a good amount of time, I um, had been focused on family and I decided it was time for me to do something around the house, something creative. I decided I'm going to go bold and I'm just going to paint the dining room all black. Like, why not? You know, like everything else in here is great. Let's just do something bold. And I painted this wall black. And then obviously from that, I was like, it needs something. It needs a pop of colour. It needs some life. We need something in here, some art. I started scrolling Instagram. And so I'm just going through Instagram and thinking, um, my gosh, there's so many amazing, inspiring, beautiful art. These artists are doing great things. I started to remember what I used to like to do myself, you know, in my early 20s and, and when I was a teenager. And I said, why haven't I done that? Like, why am I not thinking that I could just give it a go? Like, I just, you know, I could do it. So I thought I'm going to go out and get the biggest canvas I could find. And I went to the art shop and I got this huge 48 by 48 inch canvas. And I had some old paints from my TAFE days doing um, interior de design and and then I had um, some house paints laying around and some kids' craft paints and I just, like, pulled everything together. <laughs> and I spent eight weeks doing this artwork. It literally took me eight weeks, but I was, it wasn't like I was in a rush. I was enjoying mm. every second. As soon as I picked up that paintbrush, I was like, oh, this is like what what you need this is what you were missing you know not that I felt like uh, there was a missing piece I mean I was happy but you know just that part of me had been laying dormant so yeah. it was like an awakening even if that sounds you know cheesy but for me it yeah, really was completely. I was like wow I need to do this and I need to do this every day like forever <laughs> so <laughs> I just decided I'm just going to be doing this this is what I'm doing so I bought more canvases and I got proper paints and I did all these things and I got that artwork framed and it still hangs in my dining room and it's like my most prized possession it's like yeah you know Beautiful I will never reminder. ever get rid of that artwork that's going to be mine forever you know so yeah yeah it's it was it just yeah it, it fell into my lap, you know, like I, I didn't yeah. know I needed it, but there we go. And then from there I started an Instagram because I thought, you know, your friends give you feedback, right? They yeah. say, I love it, it's so beautiful, you know, yeah, you should do that, you should do more. And I'm thinking they're just being nice. <laughs> so I'm like, you're my <laughs> friend, you're just being nice. Um, so, yeah, I just decided that I'm going to try and get some feedback from other people online and see what they think so I started an Instagram to do that and I started sharing my art on there and I got some great feedback and um from there I just kind of snowballed it was an amazing it's been an mm. amazing ride but yeah the first couple of years it was like a, what is happening I was just in this blur of like people like what I'm doing they actually mm. like it because I didn't I didn't know like when I was starting that Instagram account that you know, I'd be giving myself the title of artist, really. I, I yeah. just sort of. You're just putting it I just wanted there. to do it. I knew I wanted to do it yeah. every day and I wanted to see if people wanted it in their house and mm. just see what goes from there. Like I remember saying to my husband, um, I imagine if I got like, you know, if people actually liked what I did, imagine if I got like a thousand followers or like if I got a commission, you know, or something like that. I remember just yeah. being so like, like it was a dream, like imagine mm. if that would happen. And then this whole thing happened and I was like, oh, okay, didn't anticipate that, but I'm really happy. I mean, I yeah, I, I don't think I could have, because of the way I am as a person, hmm. I'm very, um, like, I'm responsible. I'm like, you know, I do things by the book and I'm, you know, so I don't think I would have ever said to myself, like, I know, quit your job and be an artist. Like, I don't yeah. think I would have had the guts, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah. So the way everything just mapped out was perfect for my personality type. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of with that, yeah, that evolution and that growth 
And for those yeah. who don't know, yeah, you've had quite a, a big growth on Instagram, haven't you, Jess, where it's sort of yeah. like you were saying those first couple of years it probably snowballed and like and how yeah. was that journey for you, you know, and that, cool. you know. Yeah, it was exciting. Evolution. Um, it was exciting, unexpected, and um, amazing things came. Like I remember I think I got my first commission like two weeks into sharing. Mm. So that was like a massive um you know, ticked off the thing, ticked off the bucket list kind of thing. I was like, imagine if somebody wanted me to paint something for the home and that was someone local in Perth. And then um, a couple of weeks after that, I was approached by a cafe. They just wanted to hang my art in their, their brand new cafe. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. It's in the city centre. It's, you know, lots of people coming and going. And mm. um, then I started, I decided to do some workshops there and some live painting. And I just, I was up for anything really. I was like, yeah. I'm just going to explore it all and just really push myself out there, even though I'm a little bit introverted. I'm not really like a outgoing kind of personality type. So mm. um, I had to just say to myself, whatever comes is coming for a reason and you should challenge yourself and just take it on and see if you can do it. And, and I was really surprised at how natural it felt to paint in front of people and teach other people what I was learning or teaching myself. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just it was an unexpected kind of roller coaster ride. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And with, and with that like beautiful journey and evolution you've had, I guess how has it, have you found as an artist that your art has grown and changed along that ride? Yeah, um I've I've found that my, I, I don't know if I have like an art style even now. I know that I have colours that I am, you know, confident with working with and that I'm drawn to and that I will always keep going back to. Um, but I think uh, my art has evolved heaps. Like I do love organic, fluid kind of looking art and blended backgrounds and that sort of thing. So there's always constant elements in my work, but um, I'm not afraid to just let what wants to come out come out, even if it's mm. not considered recognisable as my work. I've always yeah. tried to say to myself, my main aim is to just express whatever wants to come out and to follow my intuition and to just let that be and try not to put any constraints on myself or what people might expect or what people are used to seeing or, you know, what is recognisable. Like I said, like it, I just think the best art comes out of just letting yourself get into a flow state and just really diving right in deep and letting it just come out. And I think with my abstract works um, that that organic flow kind of is really obvious because that's, the state that I'm in when I'm creating is just to just let it be whatever's going to be will be and I kind of just guide it and you know babysit it a little bit and yeah the artwork just evolves intuitively mm. yeah yeah and I think that and when I like when I followed you on Instagram that I, I sort of I guess that would be your process wouldn't it like it is very intuitive it's a very you know like you said yeah, organic yeah. type thing yeah, I try to just, um, I think you do it as a mum, you do a lot of thinking mm. all the time. You've got the tabs open, you've got to remember all these things. <laughs> it's like I've found that, you know, my head has never been so full, like, in mm. life. And um, this is kind of like just a way of switching it all off and just, you know, not having to really think at all. I just all I'm doing is moving paint around and, and blending a colour to another colour and, you know, it's really just simplifying everything that's going on around you and, yeah, pushing that aside for a sec and just being present, being there and letting the artwork just, you know, guide you and, and yeah, let it come out. Yeah, yeah, because I know and every artist's process is so different, isn't it? And I think it, it's... Yeah. It's beautiful to hear actually that you have found what works really well for you, and I actually love that about you that that you don't have that stick to this 
as my style or stick to this yeah. as you know there's that there yeah. is that evolution in what you've been doing and it I guess it allows you a freedom and maybe an excitement too that would possibly be lost otherwise yeah 100 percent. the freedom that's yeah. the thing that um I really I don't only want to feel it myself I want to convey it I want someone to yes. be able to look at my work and just feel a sense of of freedom you know of happiness yeah. of lightness of just of no worries like that's just my art really just is about losing yourself for a sec so yeah staring at it just because it looks pretty like I I love that about art myself that, and that I, escapism I isn't it myself yeah. yeah so anything that makes me feel that it that instant little bit of happiness or just a smile comes to my face when I'm looking at it it doesn't have to be a thing it can just be uh, beautiful colors blended together yeah. that's it's just it gives such a lovely sense of freedom that I yeah. because I feel that myself when I'm creating I want everyone to feel that it's like automatic you just yeah want it to come through in your work yeah and it definitely does I think that's stuff probably a draw card of all your pieces is you do feel that when you look at it and I know yeah. like the, the series you're working on at the moment which is like your squiggle sort of ones just your your colors and yeah the joy you feel in creating it but also us viewing it definitely comes through yeah and that that the squigglescape idea is it's not a new idea it's something I did I think it was 2019, 2018 was the first piece that I did that had that squiggle texture on it. Mm. Um, and I did that piece, I was, I was, um, you know, practising and, and trying different ideas with uh, piping uh, cake tips, you know, and mm. piping bags and just piping paint on all sorts of different types of frames. And this one, this one particular one that I, I did the squiggle um, scape on was a, a glass um yeah a glass with a frame around it and because of that fact I knew I would never send this overseas it's just too risky it could get broken and all these things so I just was like I'm never going to sell this this is just for me and I've kept it in my studio ever since and I and I also loved it the heaps you know but I never never went any further with it I just did that one painting and it's brought me joy ever since. Been sitting in my studio with all the other little pieces that I've collected from other artists and you know drawings from my kids. Um, it's bright, it's beautiful, it's fun. And I was looking at it the other the other week, and I was just like, why haven't I done anything more with that? Why? why? I don't know. So I just, I don't even. It's weird because of the way my art just sort of comes out. I can't even really put a thought process to it. Of how I decided to go and do that it just sort of I just started doing them and then suddenly they were just popping up all over I'm like I need to do more 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 and yes yeah, yeah. so now the studio is currently full of all these uh squiggle scapes and um and the feedback's been wonderful as well so it's been a nice um it's nice to get back to something that I guess um I feel like I I just overlooked myself you know like mm. I did it I love it it's great. And then I never did anything with it. It's it's funny how it's come full circle to just enjoying it myself on my desk to yeah. creating these pieces. To creating many more other people can then enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny. It's a bit like a sketchbook, I guess. You know, there's, for me, I, I have sketchbooks and I do do, um, I do have uh, moments of um, sketchbook, you know, where I'm just like wanting to do many pages and try all of these things and then I won't revisit it for ages mm. and then I'll come back and do some more so it depends on my mood but for me instead of having a sketchbook I tend to just go straight to the canvases you know that tends yeah. to be my my sketchbook and and a lot of the mm. pieces I'll just work until it feels right so I never really have I don't really have a pile of like um artworks that uh, just sort of sketchy type artworks I always will take it to a point where it's a finished piece you know so yeah, yeah. it starts out a sketchbook kind of idea and then it becomes yeah. this yeah a finished piece but yeah yeah which is a, not, a kind of a nice way to work because I know I've worked that with with more abstracts and that but um mm. the, there's when there's not always the planning of that piece it, and like you say when you're using the colors intuitively there's something really beautiful about that flow 
that um, yeah. you, I think you do feel that freedom in the piece. For sure. And I feel that's that's what keeps me coming back. It's yeah. that feeling. And I just need it every day. Like I've, I've, I mean, there's been times of sickness where I couldn't paint every day or there's been times where we've gone away somewhere and, you know, didn't take any paints with me or whatever. So there's been days where I haven't painted, but literally almost every other day, you know, I will do something in the studio. I have to do something. It's become yeah. like a part of my daily, you know, yeah, activities. Yeah. It's just something I have to do. And I think it's because of that feeling of freedom. It's kind of like addictive, you know. Yeah. So when you find that you are away or you don't get to do it, does it, you know, do you find that your mood changes or there's, you know, something missing? <laughs> yeah, I would say that it's it, it it's either becomes like a constant thought, you know, popping in your head like can't wait to get back oh yeah I want to do that I want to yeah. try this you know and like so there's always something popping into my head um but yeah I I'm not I'm not really one to take paints with me and do things yeah. I feel like I the studio's kind of become a part of my my creative flow like it's 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 such a happy space and I've mm. made it look aesthetically pleasing so yeah. that I can come in feel that feeling of clarity and clearness and then just you know dive into the colors so yeah I think if I could take my studio with me you know <laughs> that would be um, amazing I'd, I'd be painting every day yeah so I was thinking was it Maxwell Smart that used to I don't know had the thing in the briefcase <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I need one of those <laughs> yeah so yeah, and that was something I was going to ask you, Jess. Is like, are you like a routine person, or is is it just that um, feeling that gets you out into the studio? Like, do you have to, you know, make yourself do it, or is it you just drawn to doing it? Yeah, I'm not much when it comes to my art meth methods and and being methodical and, and having routines and stuff. Um, it really doesn't apply. I think that comes along with. Um, you know, having a family and kind of just taking your moments wherever you can get them. Um, yeah. Obviously, I've got four children. You know, life can get crazy. It can be chaotic. There's a lot of, you know, taxi rides, you know, to and from <laughs> yes. different things. Um, so the flow can be broken. I don't get like a solid six hours in my studio. Mm. It's just not something I get at the moment. My smallest child's still at home with me 24-7. We, I don't have babysitters there's no um housekeeper you know it's just me and my husband and we're doing what we can to make the family you know exist and keep going and you know uh, function um but so my moments in the studio is always uh you know just take the time whenever I can get the time so if everyone's happy they've done their homework they're just watching some tv we're good I just quickly pop in here before dinner you know mm. and get get some time going so I don't really have the luxury of being able to you know do the routines and get myself into the flow and all those things yeah. I kind of just take the time when I can and so it's almost like a switch you just have to be able to flick it on and you're in there and you're doing it and sometimes um you know I may not be able to dive straight into a painting so I will mix a color I will just blend a background on another canvas or something like that to get me into the flow and then it just happens from that so I've got my little things that I can do to to help switch it on yeah. um and, and I guess in that way I've come up with little little things that can help me just to switch into it um but yeah having everything sort of organized and mm -hmm. so I can see it and I can see the colors and the paints and the paint brushes and everything that I need out and where I want it just helps me to be able to quickly get into that um the vibe of just being able to create so I'm not thinking oh the studio is a mess and I've got to I need to clear this space or get rid of these things I there's no away. obstacles in your way to create exactly them. so yeah part of that is I just like to keep it a certain way and then that way I can just pop in and out in my pajamas all my pajamas have paint on them my <laughs> dressing gowns it's just I, I've pretty much I mean every athletic wear I wear to drop the kids to school now it's like oh there's a spot there whoops it's your signature <laughs> oh it is it's just like oh I'm not supposed to wear this one in here but I just wanted like just to touch up that little bit and then I'm like oh now I've got a spot in these pants too <laughs> yeah yeah we get lost in the in the in the studio exactly. world <laughs> sometimes going and putting my overalls on is just too much of a task I've got this thing I've got to do you know so yeah um 
Yeah, I do have an apron hanging on my door, but it literally doesn't cover the parts that I'm. It's always like the knees or the thighs that <laughs> yeah. get. Well, you kneel in it or hang. something like that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I work on the floor a lot, so yeah. I'm sitting on cushions, and yeah, I just that's yeah. you know I've accepted that almost every item of clothing in my wardrobe is just going to have. This is how you work. <laughs> It's just me, yeah. We need a range of clothing, Jess, that just has like, you know, marks of paint on it already so it all just blends in exactly. and we add to it. <laughs> We're going to set a fashion, that's it. The, new, the latest designer label is going to be paint splattered. Yeah, for <laughs> artists, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, so, Jess, do you have like a preferred medium or mediums that you like to work in? Yeah, I mean, acrylic has my heart fluid yeah. acrylics and just regular heavy body acrylics and stuff that's just me like uh, my husband he he used to do art when he was in high school and he loved oils so um he used to dabble here and there he can paint a beautiful rose like in the most amazing realistic way you know um not mm. that he makes any time for it and I'm always telling him off I'm like come on I bought you those oils why don't you get them out and dust them off yeah yeah but he's he's just you know a busybody. He's always doing something, um, but yeah, doesn't make time for that at the moment. Maybe maybe later in life. Um, but acrylic. He he always used to try to get me to give them a go. You know, oh, you like oils? You like oils? And I did try oils when I was back in high school. So I've I've dabbled in oils and I've done a couple of paintings. <laughs> my my parents still hang on their walls. Um, but I just found with the way that I work, acrylics mm. just allow me to be in that fl fluid flow yeah. state. They, you know, sometimes take ages to dry, but not as long as oils. So, no, you right. know, it's not, <laughs> it's not such a, a weight. Maybe I'm a little yeah. bit impatient. I mean, I, I'm pretty patient with my, my layers. I like to work in layers. Mm. So I let them dry and then I come back and I'll add another layer over the top and start making it work so I'm patient but not that patient obviously yeah so yeah, no, I did an oil recently and it literally did take nearly a month to dry because it was yes. that purple color and I didn't know oh. much about oil so it was just yeah. like and the pigment I'm like have I done something mm -hmm. wrong but no it was just that that process it's of... just so <laughs> pigmented it's gonna take yeah. a while I know yeah so for me it's also the um the fact that they're not very smelly it's not like yeah. working with turps you know like I work in my home studio I'm mm. a bit of a I don't like you know have, I don't want the house filled with BOCs and you know yeah, all absolutely. that sort of thing I, I'm trying to um, keep it you know a, a friendly environment for kids obviously yeah. so yeah acrylics work in that way and I've got huge windows in my studio so I can open it up and, and air it out and fans mm. and the whole lot so yeah I try to keep it um, you know to what I it's yeah the family kind of yeah that safety kind of side first. of things which so, yeah, sometimes yeah, exactly, gets overlooked but, yeah yeah so yeah but I'm in love with it so it works for me and I'm just going to keep going for what works yeah yeah because I was going to say do you have anything in future that you want to explore or that you haven't yes yeah. There is aspects of um, oils that intrigue me, like um, the Sennelia oil um, sticks. So yeah, I've been yeah. thinking, you know, of adding that element in for a long time and I've just not not done it. Like yeah. I'd say about a year they've been in my brain of like, oh, I'll get some, I'll get some, and I mm. just haven't gotten them. But yeah, um, it's something I'd like to play with. Um, mm. I love texture, so any, any form of texture um, I do like to dabble here and there. So... There are um, some Liquitex products that I'd love to give a go and I haven't dabbled in yet. So, you know, ones with like gritty kind of medium to them and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's a lot that I like to play with, um, mm. whether or not I end up, you know, keeping it in my work. I mean, who knows? But, yeah, this is like a playground to me. I mean, art is like such a – it's like there's so much to – it's like a wonderland, you know. There's so much yeah, to yeah. sort of – play with and figure out so yeah I, I can't wait a... to be yeah to to try it all so yeah and there's not enough the time is there to try it all that's it whenever <laughs> I keep saying when the kids are at school yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll have that six hour time in the studio and I'll be able to actually get in there and just yeah <laughs> really knuckle down because I, yeah. I mean I've always been in a part-time kind of capacity or well, that's how mm. I've seen it even though I'm yeah 
you know, working at all different times of day, you know, I might be in my pyjamas working, but um, I've, I've never actually been able to give it the whole, all of me, like the full time yes. kind of side of things. So I wonder what it's going to be like. You know, yeah, one day. something to look forward to, hey? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So Jess, looking at sort of your journey, you've talked about your art. So do you, any of your kids like picked up your creative genes and you know are they yeah, I guess pursuing yeah. anything creatively yeah for sure my um my eldest daughter is 14 and she is currently obsessed with drawing um I don't know what you'd call it anime chibi kind of style um characters yeah um so she uses uh, many different so she uses pencils copic markers you know a bunch of different markers and and other media um to create these gorgeous characters that I'm just like wow where did that come from like I could never I don't drawing like that I'm like mm. wow yeah <laughs> but my husband used to he used to like drawing characters and things as well so I'm like obviously she got that from dad's side but um, she has great color sense as well. So she's she's got a little studio set up in her room, you know, so that she can just dabble and do that. And she's got a little TikTok she likes to share her art on. And my son, who's um, now eight years old, he's always been artistic and he's got this natural knack for abstract. Like I feel with abstract, you know, some people say, oh, my five-year-old could do that. You hear that all the time. But I think when you actually try abstract, for yourself it's not and quite so easy is it <laughs> it isn't yeah it, no. it's not I feel like you have to kind of have an eye for it you just have to hmm. because there's no plan there's no we're not we're not uh creating a thing we're not drawing a tree hmm. we're not you know there's no plan like that it's really yeah. just working with color and making a composition and adding marks and seeing where it takes you so if you've got that kind of personality or or you know, yeah, I for that kind of thing, it kind of comes out really natural. And I think when you watch mm -hmm. children, because I've done a few workshops with kids and I've um, had paint parties for my kids' birthdays and all their friends have come and we've done a few different things and um, I watch them with the abstract and there's so many different personality types. Like there'll be ones that are very much um, restrained and they like to add in small little bits and they just very slowly building this piece so slowly and then there'll be the ones that just whoa go for it and it's like covered in the first 10 minutes of uh our session and you're like <laughs> they just don't hold back they're just like mm. ready to go so I love seeing how different personality types approach abstract because it's it's really interesting and they come up with such a different end product yeah. Um, but my son, he just has this natural knack for like little details. And he often comes in with drawings that are, you know, like pointillist style with text markers. He just does these oh, little wow. dots and he creates these artworks just with dots. I have so many piling up on my desk here. I just want to keep them all. I'm like, how does your brain work like that? And where did you mm. come up with this? You know, like he just started doing it and that's what he did. Mm. And he also wants... He did these scribbles, like just scribbled a big thing and, and he even got his little sister who's three to scribble this this drawing and then he would colour in all the shapes and he created like this beautiful abstract little um, composition mm. from a scribble. And I'm like, you know, mate, people like study years to get this, yeah. you know, to have these ideas and you've just you've come up with this, just come out of nowhere, you know, creating an artwork from a scribble I mean yeah. that's awesome <laughs> yes yeah. and how beautiful that, always like, amazes me. that you're fostering that in them though that there's that you know that they, they'll have that creativity just evolve it won't be you know hindered at all or anything like that like I think yeah that's, for sure that's I'm not beautiful. I'm not one to be like no the sky's blue darling you know I yeah, love yeah. them to come up <laughs> with what they want whatever the comes unique out ideas. Yeah, I just get them to explain, you know, I say, what's this drawing about? Or tell me about this piece and, mm. and what made you do that colour there and, and whatnot. And I do love that because that also inspires me. Yeah. I think if you can try to nurture that innocence mm. and, you know, let them just 
come out with whatever wants to come out. It's, you know, it's something that adults find difficult to do or get back yeah. to. And I think they remind they us of told, that, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So watching your kids is like the most inspiring thing you could do if you just let them yeah. go for it because you will learn so much from them. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. I was watching my daughter and that it's just that I'm like, oh, I remember feeling that way. Like it reminds mm -hmm. me of how I used to feel and I'd kind of lost. And so, yeah. and there's a sort of a freedom and a, I guess the, it, all the inhibition is removed from yeah, 100%. what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. And they're not thinking about, you know, what people might think. Like they just yeah. don't think like that as kids. They're just they in just, it and doing it. <laughs> yeah. They're just, I want to do this and I'm just letting it happen. And it's like, yeah. I love that. Mm. Yeah. I try to help um, my, my <laughs> adult uh, workshop participants to really embrace that, you know. Mm. It's, it's the feeling that if you can just let all the, the noise die out and just do it because it's fun, mm. you'll end up with a piece you'll always love. Yeah, Cause, and it reminds you of that feeling too of the journey of creating it, yeah. that, um, that joy you say that you feel when you're making it. <laughs> yeah, instantly you can look at it and just feel it again. It's nice. Mm. It's like a memory in an artwork, you know, Yeah, feeling. Yeah. So just how have you found, I guess, like, I mean, your your journey with motherhood and how has that affected your art or how you've, I mean, you've already talked a little bit about how you, you see your kids and how that, you know, translate into how, your joy in your art. But how have you found, I guess, you know, balancing the two and becoming a mum and that, that journey and the yeah. evolution? I think initially I found it quite natural. It felt very much that I could fortunately set up a space in my home, which originally I just had a corner of a dining room and I just yeah. worked from there. Um, we had a couple of disasters. My one-year-old did get into the paint a couple of times, which I did document <laughs> on Instagram. So if you go way back, you'll see a cute little photo of him covered in paint. But, um, you know, we... We learnt our way around that and mm. eventually I set up a space. I changed a room in our house that was meant to be a theatre room, which we just, we don't watch that much television. So it wasn't like anyone was really missing it. We were just using it's, it. It seemed natural to, to do it with art. <laughs> You're using yeah, that a lot more. Yeah, my friend came over. <laughs> my friend comes by Kate, Kate Martin. She's, mm. she's also an artist and she's an interior decorator as well. And she said to me, um, why don't you just make that room your studio? And I was like, oh, my God, I never thought of that. So mm. that's when I created this space. Um, and it's allowed me to be able to work around the kids and dabble here and there. And, um, you know, if they're ill at home, I'm with them, I'm here with them. I don't have to, you know, be working at that time. They can have a nap, then I can go and work. And so having that has allowed me to juggle it a little bit easier. Um, having a fourth child, though, I would say, that definitely slowed me down um, in terms of how much time I could really donate to my artwork. Um, so I would say there was a good couple of years there where I was just um, I was just letting my artwork be a slow season, you know, be in a slow season. It was mm -hmm. like I'm not going to do the live painting. Um, I'm going to cut down on the workshops. We're just going to all that has to sort of just slow down because I've got three kids that are going to school and I've got a little bub and I have to just, I can't do everything. So there was a period there where I had to tell myself it's okay to have a slow season, yeah, you know. Um, I'd been doing so much with it and then I just had to tell myself it's time to it's time to just pull back a bit. Mm. So, yeah, there's a good couple of years there where I was really just creating here or there, not really bringing out big collections or doing solo shows or workshops at all live painting at all all that sort of stuff had to just take a back seat for a little while and yeah. I love my kids I love being a mum so I yeah. it's not like I was sad I mean I was I was no a good it's time. a natural thing yeah in a different way exactly yeah. so um and actually my fourth was it, it was not a I, I'm a planner like when it comes to having kids I'm a planner and my fourth was actually the universe telling me we needed to have another baby and I'm like oh my mm. goodness so that was a big whirlwind for me like it and my husband been. will both 
in a bit of a, a stage of shock because, I mean, when you go from three to four, you've got the whole car situation. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. The room situation. <laughs> you know, lucky we, we had enough space in the house, so that's all good. Um, yeah. But we needed to change the car setup. We needed a bigger car. And, yeah, so it was a massive um, shock for a period there. So I think even, even my art was like a way for me to just like, um, I don't know, just – to be in the moment that. like and really yeah yep. process it exactly so um I was still dabbling and I was still doing art, art every day I was just mm. more keeping it to myself I stopped sharing as much on my social media I used to share daily and I just wasn't um and then content creation changed anyway with the way Instagram changed so yeah it did it wasn't it did. just about chucking up a picture you know, snapping yeah. a couple of pics and, and, and sharing them with a caption. It became more about creating an edited video and adding music and all these things. And so content creation definitely um, became more of a time-consuming thing. So yeah. in that aspect as well, the thought of sharing content became a too hard basket thing a lot of the days because I had all the things with the kids and the bub and all that. So. Yeah. You know, you didn't need another thing on that up. list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I shared what I could when I could, and I just yeah. accepted that. And it's a hard thing to accept when you're trying to build a business and you're trying to, yeah. and you'd been a certain way for so long, and then you had to have all these, you know, changes mm. um, put in place. But, um, you know, they grow up and they get more independent. And then you go back to it. So I'm in a really yeah. good place right now. And when Juggling you're in it, it, fe it feels like a long time. But then when you look back on yes. it, it was such a short time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I told myself all the time. I was like, you know, this is such a short, short time. If you're looking at the big picture of life, you know, it's mm. you're going to look back. It'll be a little glint in, in yeah, the scheme of things. Yeah. So, yeah, you just got to keep going day by day. And the next thing you know, it's been a year. I know what happened and they're driving a I car think having kids <laughs> speeds up the time I don't know what it's like some you have kids yeah, and like suddenly that. time is just disappearing yeah yeah, yeah. agree yeah because I and think my oldest is <laughs> my eldest is 16 and I kind of go yeah gee where did that you know those years yeah. just all blended yeah. and <laughs> and they're getting jobs or learning to drive yeah. and it's yeah scary stuff <laughs> So Jess, how do you find balancing that creative side with the business side of your art? And Yeah, well, I'm fortunate to have my husband who's very tech savvy. So he's like the silent partner of Jess Wanna. He, um, he hates photos. He's not a camera kind of guy. Um, so he doesn't, really, he doesn't really get much time on social media. But he's always there and he's, he's what keeps my website beautiful and helps me with my graphics on, you know, my brochures or my my gift certificates or my um, certificates of authenticity. You know, he does all those beautiful things and he, he puts my ideas into, into play. So without him, um, it wouldn't be as refined, that's for sure. Um, so, yeah, he helps me with that side of things. Um, Admin-wise, um, you know, I can't say I love doing certain aspects. Um, you know, packing uh, for shipping used to be one of my ugh, pet peeves of selling art. You know, it was like, yeah. oh, no. It takes so much box. time. Yes, <laughs> making boxes. But mm. I found a wonderful supplier of uh, my canvases and frames who um, creates the boxes and sends them over to me already perfectly packaged in their own individual box. So I never have to worry about that oh, anymore. That's so nice. I am like, yeah. I'm never going back because yep. packaging has become well a it. joyful experience. <laughs> yes. So for me, that's an investment and it's yeah. definitely worth, yeah. So um, there's aspects that I, I don't love because I'm really not business savvy. I mean, yeah. I kind of am, but I'm not, you know, like I, it's not something that comes naturally for me. I have to work at it. Like marketing my work sometimes feels a little bit alien. Yeah. Um and, you know, just what certain things you have to do as part of being on social media or, you know, you don't have mm. to do it. But if you want to do well, you kind of have to keep showing yeah. up and doing all the things. So, you know, 
um, I guess you just accept it as part of what you got to do if you're running a business for yourself. And yeah, eventually I'm gonna I'm gonna my daughter's 14 and she's tech savvy and loves tech things, loves making yeah. videos. I'm gonna be like, hey, fancy it on the side Rope job? Her into the yeah yeah. <laughs> Mum needs you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, especially if that, uh, that's something they want to do too, isn't it? It's, you know. Yeah, she loves that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, and, she, and if I'm offering her a sweetener on the side of a bit of money, and she'll be like yeah. in there. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. Everyone can benefit. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so when you're with the business side and the creating side, how do you find, I guess, balancing what you want to create as to what, as opposed to what you, what will sell or what you think will sell? Like, yeah, do you find that um, balance difficult? I think for a, a period there I was. Um, mm. I'd say the last two years for me have been a bit of a, um, a foggy kind of um, experience when it comes to creating what I want to create and overthinking what people want you know mm. so and that really it's hindered me and until this moment of you know coming into my own with my squigglescapes um up until then I felt like it, it's visible if you go back on my Instagram you can feel it you know or mm. I can where mm. it looks like I was a little lost or I'm still creating art I loved I, I'm yeah. still creating pieces I wanted to create but I felt like I was dulling myself down yeah. So I love colour, I love bright, I love happy. And I think if you look back, you can kind of see it was like you were pulling back. Yeah. You were you were I think I, I remember so you I remember a post yeah. you had about that where I don't yes. know, I've experienced that too, is where because I love bright colours and that sort of, you know, not traditional, I guess, where there's yeah. the the more yeah, I've mon- monochromatic or sophisticated type yes, art, or it's going to fit love, in it's going to fit in with yeah. this i don't know couch exactly. or something like that yeah yeah that's exactly where i was going with it it was like well basically instagram was like a flood of uh white textured art you know for yeah, a period which there. is very and beautiful just, yeah i love and i was enjoying mm. it too i was thinking that looks great <laughs> But I'm there going, mine is so far removed from white mm. textured up. And it's yeah. very easy to allow that to creep in and to yeah. be like, I should be doing more dull stuff. I should be doing more sophisticated. I should be doing more textured. I should be doing this, this, this. And it becomes this fog of like, what am I doing again? Yeah. I, you know, I'm not really, am I following what I want to do or am I letting that tell me what to do? So it was like I gave myself permission to create the art nobody was asking for. I just said to myself, white texture art is in. That's not me. Okay, let's just embrace that and do what you want to do. Just do what you always used to do and create what you want to put out there. So I just started doing it and I was blown away by the the feedback that I've been getting and the um, traction on you online when you do that are you often surprised by the reaction or by you know by being true to yourself I definitely and putting, was putting that time. out there mm. yeah I definitely was I you know you feel the nerves of like oh this is so far removed from what everybody apparently wants or you know is buying um so you do feel those nerves and that's something that you have to push past you have to just say mm. you know my main aim when I started this business was to create for myself and if people liked it and I sold it, great. That keeps me buying art materials That and art mm. materials are bloody expensive, um, especially <laughs> yeah. if you want the good quality, professional grade, blah, 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 you know, all the good archival stuff, which mm. I love. Um, so, you know, you have to fund that in some way and, um, you know, the sales are obviously something you need to keep keep coming in. Um, but I said to myself, I'm not going to let it drive what I'm doing because when I do that, that's when I don't feel the freedom. That's when I don't feel the happiness. That's when I start to lose all that I love about what I'm doing. So mm. I just said to myself, put the art out that you want to uh, that you want people to see, that you want to show to people, to enlighten people, you know, to almost... 
um, maybe it's the art they didn't know they needed. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I so, love that. I love that. So yeah, that's 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 what I said to myself. I said, stop worrying so much about what everybody might want to see or what you think people are wanting to see, and just put out the art that you love, and you will find your people, and your people will yes. find your art, and that's just the vibe that you've got to go with because um like I purposely don't even check my search page anymore on Instagram um or anywhere else I try not to I don't like um being influenced too much you know so yeah and I know that about myself obviously if I'm there looking at these things I'm going to be feeling influenced so yeah I think I just shut all that down Mm. and decided to just listen to what's going on inside yeah no I think that's really good advice hey it's um yeah definitely something I've struggled with as well yeah yes it's not easy it is a hurdle Mm. and just I noticed that that you often Mm. will work in series like you'll do a big lot and then have that available is that something that's sort of just been a natural transition or has that been you just find you work best that way I think um it's something that I started to do because um, I had a lot of people asking for the same type of piece. Like if I was doing a piece, initially on Instagram, I would put up a piece and it would sell. And then I would do another piece, something different, and then that would sell. So I didn't have like a, I didn't have a lot of art hanging about. And that kind yeah. of really worked well because storage wise, I just don't have the capacity for that. Um, but then you know, there'd be a lot of people DMing me and be like, oh, no, I wish oh, you did another one like that. I missed it. I didn't see it. And because it's a lot of my clientele is international, so I might post it at a certain time and then they haven't seen it for ages and yeah. someone's already snapped it up. So um, I can't please everyone because, you mm. know, the time difference is different everywhere. So it's like you've got to pick a time, you've got to put it up. So I started saying to myself, maybe you should work in, in collections to make it a little bit fairer for everybody to get their hands on a piece and I found it does work for me in terms of Mm. um it sounds like it was a natural transition it it definitely became Mm. a natural thing like I I've always worked on many artworks at once so I'm not one to just have one canvas on the go finish that and then go to another one I find for especially working abstract I work better when I can bounce around and canvas hop I call it like canvas hopping where you just you know, popping from that one and then you leave that one to dry. So you go to the next one, you do a bit on there and you do another one. So I've often got a lot of pieces on the go anyway. Mm. Um, but I just said to myself, well, that's basically like a collection. You know, you're just you're working on a bunch of pieces at once. Instead of just putting one up when it's done, just wait until they're all done and then you pop them all up all together. So really it was a very natural um, mm. progression. And I find it works really well. Yeah. For just, yeah. Um, getting consistency through your work and, yeah, I just think it works for me. Yeah. And I guess looking back over your art journey from that first painting you created, like do you have any, I guess, highlights that have stood out in that time that you'd like to share? Oh, I've done some fun stuff. I, um, I've, I've worked for... Um, I worked, I did a PR thing for a company. They wanted me to do, um, paint these giant ice creams. <laughs> so random. But my colours at the time were very sorbet, kind of pastels and all of, that's what I was loving at that time. And so they approached me because they're like, they love my colours, they love, you know, what I, how I do. And they think they're very ice cream style. of. Co- mm. And this is what we're giving you is like these massive canvases to just do whatever you want on. And I was like, this sounds like the dream job. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in. Mean, yeah, great, doing it. Um, so I just had to live paint these ice creams. And then, um, yeah, they put them around the, it was a for a shopping mall. So it was all around and um, people could go and view them. And it was just a fun job. Like it very sounds really of, fun. Out of the box. But, yeah, yeah, it was a highlight for sure. I, I, I look back and think, that's sort of what I started this for. I, when I started Instagram, I was yeah. like, I just don't want to get to like 90 and look back and go, why didn't you just do something with it? Mm. Why didn't you mm. just, you know, get it out there and share it with people? So I said to myself, no, I'm just going to take that leap, jump that hurdle. There was a little bit of fear there, obviously, because like you think 
I'm going to be judged here. This is like personal. This is my art. Like this is, I love it, but maybe people won't love it. And I don't know how the feedback's going to go. So yeah, there was that. And then I find myself doing jobs like, like that live painting yeah. in the middle of a shopping mall, people walking past and I'm like painting ice creams. It's, it's fun. And yeah. yeah, I've had a lot of highlights though. Lots of live painting at balls and things like that, which I love for that connection. I love yes. that um that in-person connection when people can watch the the art coming to life and then they come back an hour later and they're like oh whoa it's changed so much since I first saw it and they give their little um spiel of what they see or you know their little interpretation of of the piece and I love hearing that I'm like wow I never thought of it from that aspect and it's yeah. like an eye-opening thing so that's why I'm excited to be doing this up market um I've got the art up market coming up yeah. um in October and I, that's what I'm doing all this you're um, working this towards that. For. yeah I'm working mm. towards that so that will be great to be able to get yeah. some locals out and about seeing my work and uh, um I think the Perth market um I've, I've had clients in Perth it's not like I haven't sold in Perth but it's just yeah. not my main market so it's exciting mm. to see what they might think about yeah. um my art yeah so excited so for that what does that involve for you, Jess? So, like, is you'll have your artworks there? Are you painting there, or what? Share with us, yeah. Yeah. About so, that. Um, well, I'm, uh, they selected me as the featured artist, which is uh, so flattering. I, I was amazing. Yeah, yeah, really happy to, to take part in this. It's a, it's actually an event that I wanted to do for a good couple of years. They they did ask me if I wanted to participate a long time ago, and I. I, I said it was on the to-do list. The problem is I was uh, pregnant at the time, about to have a baby, and I, I just the timing didn't um, match up for me. And then once, like I said, I got into a bit of a slow season, so I just couldn't see myself doing any big events um, or big collections uh, while my bub was so little. So I put it off for a little bit, and then this came around, and um, I I get to be front and centre at the at the up market and meet a bunch of um, artists that I've seen and been following online, but I've never actually met there in my hometown. Um, so that's, I'm very excited for that. Um, but also just to, yeah, get back out there in the in the local market. Like I haven't had my art on display um, at any cafes recently or anything like that. So it'll be like stepping back out into it. Yeah. So it uh, yeah. sounds like it'll be fairly special then for you. Yeah, I think so. It'll be it'll yeah. be nice. My husband's going to be there with me, helping me out, and yeah, it'll just be a a good event to to break back into getting my art yeah. back out there locally. Mm. Yeah, and I think that connection that um, you have one on one with people, you know, that art. I think I feel you wouldn't have without the art is really beautiful, and I love that part of it. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I love doing solo shows. Um, I haven't done one since 2019 again because I had a baby. I was very mm. pregnant at that one too. Um, <laughs> and standing in heels, which boy, that was um that was hard work. But uh yeah, I I like solo shows for that for that reason because um, you know, artists come, uh, art lovers come, I get to you know, hear all different um uh stories on their walk of life and what brought them here and what connects them to my work and we find a lot in common and yeah I just think that every artist should do a solo show here or there if they can um because yeah it's just it's just a lovely way to connect and when you've got that um it I don't know I just think it's awesome it's it's a magical part of what we do yeah. Do you have any stories, Jess, about, you know, I guess collectors of your work and, you know, I, I often find that I hear the most amazing stories of like maybe why someone purchased a work or how it makes them feel, that kind of thing? Um, I've had a lot of stories. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot that stand out. I mean, for me, it's a bit like it's still a feels like a dream like when somebody reaches out to you from a country far away on the other side of the world and says I've been following you for a long time I finally you know saved and I'm ready to or I've just built my new house and I can finally get that artwork or whatever and I, I just always feel like that is you know 
almost unbelievable that somebody would have me on their wish list, have my work on their wish list, you know, that they're, they've been dreaming of it for such a long time. So I'm always touched when, and when anything sells, when anybody reaches out to me and asks for a commission or, you know, it just to me feels like a dream. It's like um, just the ultimate flattery that, that somebody connects so much with my work. Um, you know, a lot of people say it's the colours. There's something about them that just, you know, it lifts them up and they, yeah, just want to have it every day in their house, which, again, I'm like, I can, I totally get that. I mean, my walls in my house are all the colours that I love, but like not the walls themselves covered in art that, that are yeah, the colours that yes. I love. And because it's like an instant mood lifter. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, the fact that people want to put it in their house is always just gets me. And I do get teared up. Mm. I often get teared up. I cannot believe sometimes people, yeah, they tell me these stories and the connections, you know, sometimes um, they may have lost a loved one mm. and they tell me that they what their favourite colours were and this is why they wanted that artwork, that's why they bought it. And that to me is like, oh, it just touches right in the heart, in the feels, you yeah. know. It's like, oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah, there's yeah, quite a lot of happy tears. Yeah, there's that very emotional, uh, visceral connection, connection, isn't there, often? For sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just love that aspect, for sure. Yeah. And so I guess just how do you have any advice for, I guess, that, you know, for living that fulfilling life and, um possibly for artists who are you know just starting out or you know I guess that want to pursue doing art I've always said just do it like when yeah. whenever you know I get I get dms a lot a lot of dms about um either students or younger people or sometimes people my age or older and they're saying, you know, I've always been creative but I never did anything with it or the students, they're like, oh, I'm a bit nervous, I don't know, should I do this? I always say just do it. It's, you know, you just do it. You will never, ever look back. You will never look back. You will just, once you start, it just, it opens up a part of you that, um you know, only art can really access, like only mm. creating can really access. And if you love it, um, other people will love it. If your passion and your love is visible in your everything you do, your um, websites, your social media, your art itself, people connect to other people's passions. That It's just like a natural draw card. And if you're open about your... Um, your prices, you're open about your the way you work and what you're doing, you will just find your audience and it doesn't need to be big. It's not about having lots of followers or being seen as this, you know, um, big artist. You just really need to find your people. And um, I just say go for it and go for it fully, like really just give your all to it see it as call yourself an artist from day one just literally label yourself an artist wear the title even if you have to fake it till you make it just to start with but you just put that title on yourself and um and really live it because um you know the life that you want if that's what you want mm -hmm. it will come to you if you really just fully commit to it yeah and so in saying that, Jess, I was in probably finishing up, uh, like as artists, you know, if you've come up against like, you know, obstacles or any hurdles that you have or difficult times, challenges, how have you found it best to move through those? For me, the way I work, um, it really just has to be you've got to push yourself through it. You know, like there's the fear factor, there's the unknown, and, yeah, that's daunting. Yes, that's a hurdle. It's it can be a big one, but you just have to push yourself past it. You just have to see past it. Um, and it's really the only way to get where you want to go is, yeah, you've just got to jump the hurdle and and not be so fearful of what's on the other side because really, you know, it's the things you don't do that you regret that you're going to look back on and you've got nothing to lose really if you look at it. You know, getting your art out there 
is it, only good things will come from it, I tell you. There'll be like a few negative Nellies in there. There'll be a couple of trolls here or there. You'll have, you know, people telling you you shouldn't or you can't or you're not good enough. Everything that comes in that's against where you want to go with your work, you just got to push past, push out. And I know it can be hard because art is personal. You're putting your heart out there. This is like your whole soul. So <laughs> it's hard not to take certain things to heart. But I always just tell myself, push past it and only good comes from it. And on the whole, it, the feedback you often get, and that is extremely positive and extremely supportive, isn't it? Oh, oh yes. There's only a yeah. few here or there. And really, <laughs> it's so small. The art community online, I have to say, is it's quite the beautiful. most supportive, beautiful mm. community. Like, you know, I just have never um, experienced such support from strangers, complete strangers or strangers that I've only ever DM'd a few times or whatever. The support is wonderful and it is a driver and that's what mm. I say about just being open and sharing yourself because you'll find your people and they may not purchase a work but they're there cheering you on and that is just as important and, you know, from that can only come growth. So that's why I always say just do it, <laughs> just do it. Yeah. Well, Jess, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful, authentic self and your your, I guess, journey and your joy and freedom in your artwork. And just where can people find you um, in finishing up? Yeah, well, thank you for having me and giving me the space. I, as I said, my first podcast, so hope I wasn't too long-winded. It, was, um, it was an absolute pleasure. You know, <laughs> awesome, good. Um, but, yeah, so you can find me on Instagram and TikTok, just one, art, uh, just one underscore art. And uh, Facebook and all the other, you know, my website, jesswanart.com. Um, if you want to see more, subscribe so that you don't miss any uh, new collections or workshops that I may be having in the future. Thank you for joining us on the Trailblazers Palette Podcast. We appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe and share if you enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned for more inspiring conversations with incredible guests. Keep blazing your trail and until next time, stay inspired. This is Sancha, your host, signing off. See you soon, trailblazers.